All right, good evening, everyone. I'm seeing it's about 6 o'clock. Yeah, I know. I would like to open the meeting with a roll call sure. to go directly into open session. All set? All set. John Burke? Here. Will Sanklitz? Here. Steve Sylvia? Here. Jennifer Blum? Here. Bob Clark? Here. Carolina is not here tonight. Crystal Ng? Here. Courtney Brightman? Here. Thank you. In addition, we have uh, Superintendent Alan Strauss and a representative of our legal counsel, Ms. Kelly Gonzalez. I see Lake Cam present in addition. Um, is there anybody here that will be recording the meeting tonight? Namaskit. Thank you. Um, I would ask everyone to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. John, beforehand, before we start that, I would like everybody to take a moment of silence for the victims in Georgia. There was a school shooting today, two teachers and two students passed away. Um, let's take a moment for them and their families in the schools. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I thank everyone for joining us tonight, this first day of school. I'll accept a motion to accept the minutes from the August 21st meeting of this year. So moved. Uh, hearing a motion and a second, any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Um, I would like to move around a couple of the things on the agenda. Um, I would like to move first um, a committee update with legal uh, regarding confidentiality. I'll make a motion to move um, 6B to take it out of order to discuss the committee update with legal regarding confidentiality. Okay. Here a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion passes. Thank you, Courtney. From our last meeting, we had a discussion that needed some legal clarification. I directed some questions to Kelly and her team, and they they have some some answers for us that I'd like to share. Would you, you like to speak them? to it, sure. Please. Um, so the first question regarded uh, the evidence that the superintendent provides to the school committee for purpose of the evaluation. The question was whether that evidence becomes um, as a public, public information at that time. Um, any document um, that is received or created by a public entity is what's considered to be a public record for purposes of the public records law. However, it is exempt from disclosure under that law because the information, or to the extent that it has um, confidential information or as a personnel record or subject to some other exemption. Um, so if the information was submitted, the raw evidence, if you will, um, in confidence for the limited purpose of the evaluation, it wouldn't be something that could be shared widely with the public, um, especially to the extent that it had confidential information about personnel or students or things like that. So um, that was the thing that answers the first question. Does it? Yes. Okay. And then the second question um, was whether um, the superintendent is allowed to provide the raw evidence, so actual staff evaluations, email correspondence with parents, et cetera, for purposes of the evaluation. Uh, yes, that is not impermissible. Um, I mean, one could argue that in some cases there's a, a best practice of redacting what you can or maybe putting you know, confidential notes on it just for bill of suspenders. 
Um, the superintendent is supposed to provide you with the information needed to properly evaluate him. Um, and so he would provide that information and um, you know, some of the information I don't know well enough either way, but you know, for example, student names or information or staff names might be relevant for him to provide you that information so that you can properly evaluate him. So again, that's meant to be provided um, to you as authorized personnel through your role as evaluators of the superintendent. So it doesn't make it public information. You are permitted to see it for that limited purpose. Did that answer that question? Yes. Okay. And then the third question uh, was if someone could come here tonight, so yes. Um, then the fourth question is if a committee member then forwards the email um, on the understanding or belief that it was public information. Um, and if that's a violation that warrants further investigation, and I would recommend that yes, it does warrant further investigation because that would be a violation. Um, if it's communicated outside of sort of this circle um, where things are provided in confidence, um, in compliance with, for example, FARPA and the stu mass student records regulations, um, if that if there could have been violated, I think you need to um, investigate that, determine who got it, how they got it, and what um, steps you need to take to manage that. Kelly, thank you. Sure. Um, are there any questions or comments for Kelly? I, th I think I just have a couple of follow-up questions. So on the question of the email in terms of an investigation, can you recommend a path on what that would look like? Sure. Um, I think you can try to determine who it was sent to by whom, um, who opened it, who received it, when. Um, I think we can, we have and can pull what is done on this side of things. So if you used a Freetown Lakeville um, email address, we already know, we can see that. Um, I know at least one person um, was logged in in a, their personal email and it just logged in um, unintentionally. And I believe that they were given permission from the owner of the document, which was the superintendent to open that. And that person has explained that they have not forwarded it to anyone else. Um, there is another person who has said that they provided it to their um, if they gave it through the personal information email, for example, they would then and then shared it with other people or downloaded it and shared it. That is then we would know what happened and what was shared with whom. Yeah. So that would be the first step would be to ask the person to provide that information and then go from there. Uh, okay, so it, it is your opinion we do need an investigation. Do we do the investigation right now and just have the conversation in open session or do you do we make a motion and formalize the process and do the investigation in a different arena? I don't know that it has to be a formal process. My understanding um, is that the chair has gotten some information already um, is after being notified of this. So perhaps he can share that with you and determine whether additional information is worth gathering. Um, but I, I don't know that we know the full extent of what was disclosed. So there's, you can do it informally, you can do it formally. I don't know that we're gonna get the answers tonight. Um, so you, you could delegate to you know one or two people to be in charge of that. You can ask the person to provide all information to, for example, the chair by a date certain, um, and go from there. I don't know. I don't know the extent of it either. So it's a little bit hard to, to determine the scope of an investigation without knowing exactly um, what was released when. So as the chair or through mm -hmm. the chair would you like to set some parameters on how we're going to proceed because we did attach a pending evaluation to this given we suggested that it may be compromised giving the sharing of the information so how do you suggest we proceed at this point so in terms of the evaluation based on my understanding i don't know that anything would hinder the uh, fair and accurate um, evaluation if that is a concern i think it certainly should be discussed and you should go from there but simply sharing the information, even if it was improper, doesn't mean that the evaluation itself isn't, isn't proper. But again, if, if someone feels otherwise, now's the time to, to discuss it and go from there. Well, I, I think it's just an order of operations. I'd, I'd rather put this aside and, and get an outcome or a determination on this piece and then move forward with the evaluation. Whether we do it tonight, I'm, I'm sort of hearing a little bit of gray, but I think I'm looking, John, for some leadership on how we're going to proceed. Okay. Given you're so, the chair. So through the chair, Go ahead. I think there's very little gray here, folks. I do. Um, I think Ms. Ng 
came out and, and stated that she did send the email to Margaret French. Margaret French did request access. The superintendent denied access, right? So I think we can certainly look into it more and see what other emails were sent. If there are more emails that maybe shouldn't have been shared that were, um, I just have, uh, I'm just so, uh, I'm disappointed and distraught. Um, I think, missing last meeting, 821, I went back and I watched the meeting and some of your, your statements that you made just didn't sit well with me. Um, you said you actually called the superintendent's association. They agreed with your assertion that yes. Alan was sharing private, right? And right. MASC, when I spoke to Glenn this Got week, Got it. he said the same thing. Yep. And I have the documents yep. right here. Yep, that's great. So I have okay. a document as well uh, from Tom Scott from MASS. Can I have a second to read this for, please. for the public? No. Yeah, please go ahead. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Freetown Lakeville School Committee. Uh, dear Chairman Burke, I've been informed that a comment was made during a school committee meeting that an individual at MASS told Crystal Ng that certain actions by the superintendent were a fireable offense. I reviewed the recording of the meeting and spoke with colleagues. To my knowledge, not, no one at MASS spoke with Ms. Ng and no one opined that any actions were a fireable offense. By the way of further information, a call into the office of MASS was received on Friday, August 2nd, 2024 by Robert Ng yeah. with a request for a callback. I returned the call the following Monday and spoke with Robert Ng. He proceeded to inform me that he was referred to MASS by Desi regarding his complaint to them, uh, a complaint to them that confidential student information was written by the superintendent of schools in a public document. I informed him that we were not involved in local issues and I expressed that I wasn't clear why he was contacting us. He seemed very uncertain about the reasoning as well and simply stated that Desi referred him to call MASS. He asked if confidential student information can be provided in a public document. I stated that it cannot. He did not provide the context and I was unaware of the specific circumstances. At no time did I make the comment that this was a fireable offense. After 20 years fielding such calls, I'm keenly aware that there are multiple sides to these issues and I have never, would never pass such judgment on a call. Sincerely, Thomas A. Scott, Director of Finance and Member Services. So this is from MASS. You also stated, right, mm -hmm. uh, and you said that you called Desi and okay. Desi would like you to file a complaint and you said no, right? I did. Yeah, because I didn't want to release the student's information. And then I did file a complaint. Thank you. You this did. This week. You did. Correct. Yes. We, we have that. I did. So contrary to what you said publicly, you did file a complaint. And that was last week. Okay. Thank and you. And then I did file a complaint. Yep. It wasn't this last week. week. Yeah. So did you? So you you filed a complaint on the behalf of a parent, correct? No, I did on a family. Not. No, I did not. I asked her specifically how I should fill out the form, and she said, "Well, who are you?" I said, "I am a school committee member." And I said that this is, for, they said, I cannot file a FERPA complaint. Okay. And she said that you can file the Jesse complaint. And I said, sure. okay. Okay. Did you reach out to the family to let them know you were filing a complaint on their behalf? No. Okay. Because I have an email from the parent as well. Because I called her um, this week to sincerely apologize that her information was being shared on behalf of the committee. Um, and I have an email from her. Can I can I read that email through the chair? Sure, you may. Thank you. If I may, may I suggest you not read the names or, conf or information about who the person is, please, to put me in confidentiality. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank Great you. to have you here. Save my butt. <laughs> um, thank you for our call last Wednesday. It was valuable to touch base and gain further insight following my discussion with Mr. Strauss. I wanted to clarify a few matters in writing as it appears that there have been some misinterpretations and mishandlings regarding an exchange I had with Mr. Strauss in June which continued over the summer. First and foremost, I have no objection to the email exchange between Mr. Strauss and myself being used as evidence in his evaluation. I believe that like corporate performance evaluations, evidence is necessary to support one's position. Since Mr. Strauss reports to the school committee, I view this process as akin to an employee providing performance examples to their manager. I do not believe my confidentiality was breached by Mr. Strauss, including my emails and his evaluation. However, 
I do have serious concerns about the school committee members sharing my emails along with other performance related evidence provided by Mr. Strauss outside of the school committee. While I understand that Mr. Strauss' final evaluation is public, it is my understanding that the supporting evidence provided to and from the school committee should remain confidential. It is deeply troubling to me that a matter concerning my son was shared with individuals outside the relevant situation and hierarchy. I want to emphasize that the contents of my email must not cause any issues for my son or my family. I also expect the future correspondence to be handled with the highest level of confidentiality. As a best practice, it might be wise to redact key information before dissemination. Additionally, I have been informed that a school committee reviewed my exchange with Mr. Strauss and argued that it did not reflect increased parent communication, but rather frustration. This interpretation is incorrect. My son was involved in a serious issue at the end of the school year, and after exhausting efforts with local school administration, I escalated the concern to Mr. Strauss. His response was the only one that made me feel heard and led to productive discussions on how to improve the situation. Any frustration expressed in my emails was directed at the situation itself and not Mr. Strauss. He prioritized our concerns and fulfilled his commitments throughout the summer. I will not allow my words to be used to further agenda against Mr. Strauss. In the future, if there are questions about written text, I would appreciate direct communication with the author to clarify intent. Rather than assumptions, regardless of an individual opinions of Mr. Strauss's performance, sharing information outside of the school committee and misinterpreting emails is highly inappropriate behavior for an elected school member. Thank you for your attention to this matter. So that's from the panel. And saying you also talked around, you talked to Desi. Desi told you to put in a complaint, correct? Yes. Okay. So I don't understand why Desi would have you put in a, in a um, complaint when on page 13 of the packet for Desi, discussing evidence pertaining to the superintendent's evaluation, it says, important note, right here. I can pass it around, right here. Any evidence collected by or shared with school committee as part of a superintendent's evaluation, particularly when such evidence may communicate information about students, families, and or staff, must adhere to all confidentiality rules and regulations. Right there by Desi. So, the same, you've used the, the, the word transparency in numerous times in, in a number of different public meetings. Mm -hmm. We don't have a transparency problem right now. We have an integrity problem. Okay. It's integrity. I mean, your, your comments at the last meeting, I, I, I would be brash to call them lies, but they're not accurate. They're not. They're just not. So I don't know where we go from here. I don't know how the committee goes into executive session and trusts that the conversations we have aren't going to come out. It's my opinion, and I'm one of eight, that we do need to figure out a, a path forward here. I think a censure is, is the, the route to go, as you stated at the last meeting, not censoring you, not stopping your ability to speak. We wouldn't do that. A censure, right? Which is a public acknowledgement by a local school committee that what you did was not acceptable. And in my opinion, this was not acceptable. And I hope, I hope the communities in Freetown and Lakeville are watching and seeing this. The people that are calling for transparency, the people that are calling for communication are the, the people that aren't communicating and the people that are the least transparent. Our town administrator in Freetown are putting information, out there, information requests out there through fake names. Jim Jones. It's a joke. No. So moving forward, we need to figure out a path. Because we're sitting here on the first day of school and we're not talking about the kids. Period. So I would like to make a motion to publicly censure Crystal Ng for sharing information outside of the committee. And as part of that motion, I do recommend removing her from all subcommittees that she's a part of. I don't know how I can go into negotiations with teachers and make sure that that story is staying in the room at the negotiation bargaining table. I don't. 
and I don't know how we move forward together. So there's a motion is on this, the floor. I'm just going to say this, Will. Is this something you really want to do? It is. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Is that a threat? Because I'm kind of taking that as a threat by you saying to him, okay, okay. What's next, Crystal? I didn't. Th I didn't threaten anybody. Just all I did was ask. You said, okay. So through the chair, point okay. of order, please. There is a motion and a second on there. Okay. I I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion, Crystal? Do you, do you care to speak to it? All I can go is is what I was told. Um, I don't move without investigating everything, and I told you. Mm -hmm what I had to say um, you know you guys moved this out into the public you were going to do it in executive session um, I I don't even know what to say anymore about this you know if it's not one thing with you guys mm -hmm. it's another you know <laughs> um, you want to take me off the subcommittees I can't stop you from doing that. But like I said, I don't do these things. And if if that mom was upset, I I called Desi. I spoke to Desi. I called Glenn at MASC. I spoke to him on the phone. You know, I called the Attorney General's office. I spoke to the Attorney General's office. You know, I was given the correct information as they saw it. Um, you know, it, I guess we see what happens from here. You know, if that if this is what you want to do, I mean, I can't stop you from doing it. But I can say, I'm not resigning if that's the way we're going with this. Just to respond to that through the chair, cool. the words resign never came out of my mouth during that. What I was just talking about. Oh, I'm just, so, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying it. That's, yeah. that's all. I never said you said anything. John asked for my response, and I gave it. Yeah, I mean, there's some, some serious allegations on both sides. I mean, yeah, I don't know how to address a situation like this. Both sides. Both sides. What were both sides there? No, I mean there were serious allegations in the beginning, you know, and now we have some evidence that you know, does not corroborate any of that. Right. So when you say both sides, it's not from our uh, side. Yeah. No, I, I misspoke. just want to specify that. I misspoke. Um, <clears throat> and, and if I could just add, and, Go ahead. and I think we'll learn more about this later in the mm -hmm. agenda with an open meeting law complaint yes. that we have to address. And, and you say we were going to do this in executive session. I can't speak for the committee, but I have no confidence or trust to ever go into another executive session again under the current makeup of this committee. Mm -hmm. I just don't think we can be productive, and, and I think we need a path forward. So that really does limit our ability to have conversations about certain negotiations and other matters. But given that open meeting law complaint that frankly has no merit, I would real, really have reservations, trust, and confidence about doing that. So we'll get to that at some point, but later in the later in the agenda. Mm -hmm. You're correct, though. Okay. Any other comment, discussion from anyone at the table? Okay. I have a motion on the table uh, for a censure uh, of missing. I have a motion and a second. With a roll call. Point of point of clarification. Okay, point of clarification. With the removal of the subcommittees that she's currently sitting on. Okay. Thank you. Motion on the table is for a censure and removal of the subcommittees for Ms. from which Ms. Ng sits at the moment. Um, a roll call vote, please, Renee. John Burke? Yes. Will Sankowitz? Yes. Steve Sylvia? Yes. Jennifer Blum? Yes. Bob Clark? Yes. Courtney Brightman? Aye. And Crystalline, obviously. <laughs> I'll, I'll abstain. Okay. <laughs> Motion passes. Right. Um, 
moving on to the can I, can I just add, I, I, I do want to follow up on the email piece um, and, and if we could through the chair request something through the IT to see I mean I could ask you directly but I, I don't know that the answer um, I don't know what I would get for an answer but Which who did you send the email to did you send it to other people did you send other emails to people what was your intent in sending that email those sort of mm -hmm. questions but pulling from IT if there's any evidence that there's been other emails would be at least something that I would like to consider and if if Kelly if you feel that that's appropriate I I, I don't know how to formalize that other okay. than through I, your I can, leadership I can speak to that for a second um, there is an active information request going on okay for that information outside of of what has been shared um, verbally in an open session um, I have not been provided any any evidence to so, so this know, has been active to for a few weeks now do we have a timeline on when this will be complete and we can get some responses on that um, I do not at the moment Steve. or we have to set a date mm -hmm. I assume if they're direct questions to missing would you like me to jump in? if you can yes. yeah jump okay, that'd be great you. so there was a public record request uh, I don't have the date in front of me we actually complied to the extent we could the only emails that we don't have are the ones we're missing um, my understanding is they've been requested a few times and have not been provided yet I, I asked John if well, when I was in open session I said who I provided it to and then I said do you want the actual email do you want me to forward you the forwarded email yes we is that, those. that okay so any emails that you sent anything that you sent from your Freetown Lakeville account we can already we've already pulled and produced right to the extent you did it from a personal account we don't have a way of getting that without you providing it to us so if you have texts emails whatever outside of your official accounts that you good. can please forward those to John or you can forward them directly to me and then we can produce them or we, we review them first by Friday by it's tomorrow. overdue so by Friday at the latest would be wonderful great I'm send them to you tonight yeah. no, just that That'd one be great. email thank you Christopher no problem thank and you sorry I have one mm -hmm. more thing and if you downloaded please. it and then because we can see sort of people who requested it but if you did you download it and send it to anyone or is it just the forward no it was just the forward Okay. Thank you for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, everybody. No problem. All right, moving on. Um, superintendent's evaluation. I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, while we're on this road here, I think that we should. I'd like to make a motion to take number seven out of order and put seven at six A, so that we can get this bogus M O M L out of the way. Okay. Um, and then we can move on. Jen, thank you. I have a motion on the table to move our new business ahead of the superintendent evaluation. Do second. I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay, motion passes. Okay. Open meeting law complaint. Um, I can speak to that. have an official uh, open meeting law complaint for the date of July 31st um, I will read I will read the complaint aloud as it's written on July 31st 2024 the Freetown Lakeville School Committee entered an executive session under pretenses citing the reason as discussing negotiation strategies for non-union personnel. However, the discussion revolved around the superintendent's public survey results. When I inquired about releasing the survey results, Ms. Blum stated that it contained personal information to which I suggested redacting the sensitive information. Mr. Clark opposed this, claiming the public would not want to see the survey results. Upon returning to open session, Mr. Sankowitz falsely claimed that the survey results were overwhelmingly positive. The next topic of discussion was the violation of the open meeting law by the superintendent evaluation subcommittee. During this discussion, Ms. Blum mentioned hearing about an open meeting law complaint with the regional 
Finance Subcommittee, parentheses, I'm committee chair, which Steve Sylvia supported. The making up of the rumor went on for several minutes. There was never any open meeting law violation for the Finance Subcommittee. Additionally, no meeting notes are available for the executive sessions, and the committee has been accepting meeting minutes without them. These are some unproductive and unprofessional behavior exhibited by four Freetown Lakeville Regional School Committee members. Over the past four months on the school committee, both I and Carolina Hernandez have been victims of harassment, including sexist comments, underlying tones of racism, and emails from fictitious residents of Asonet and Freetown. These emails contained information that was discussed during executive sessions. When Carolina inquired if veteran committee members had sent these emails, no one in the room denied it. Furthermore, emails from concerned citizens forwarded to the committee received no response or investigation of the incidents. The committee has a history of harassment as exemplified by Ms. Sherry Barron's resignation last year due to bullying. Um, the form asks, what action do you want the, pub the public body to take in response to your complaint? The complaint says, the four committee members should resign their positions on the Freetown Lakeville School Committee. A public apology, a public apology for their behavior unbecoming for a public official. Um, this complaint is signed, Crystal Ng, and dated August 20th of this year. So as part of my obligation is to um, present this meeting in an open session um, within 14 business days of receiving it. Open for a discussion? Yes. Yeah. I would like to go first. Oh, sorry. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, it seems like we have two different issues in this open meeting law complaint. Correct. Can we sort of tackle them? One is the open meeting law, right? The something mm -hmm. that speaks to the open meeting law, and then there's another other allegations that I don't think necessarily speak to the open meeting law. So can we tackle them separately? I think that's fine. Jen, you requested to speak, or right ahead? Yes. So I did prepare a statement due to the terrible allegations <coughs> and lies, and also to the very reckless reporting of the mascot. Starting with the fabrication of the OML, it's disgusting. Not only is it a complete lie from start to finish, but filing a public document accusing four of us of harassment, including sexual comments and underlying tones of racism is deplorable. Technically, only 10% of what you wrote pertains to an open meeting violation, and the other 90% was you taking advantage of a public document to slander four of us. Stating that the school committee has a history of harassment and that Sherry Barron resigned last year due to bullying, I personally have never witnessed anyone being bullied. What I did witness firsthand was the propaganda spread by one individual outside of the committee against Superintendent Strauss that led to a separation within our committee. It is wild, Crystal, that you would refer to yourself and Carolina Hernandez as victims of sexism and underlying tones of racism when the first time I have ever seen or witnessed any form of racism in the four years I've served on this committee came in the form of an email sent to our entire committee from Carolina Hernandez after the August 21st meeting titled Official Complaint to which Carolina wrote about fellow committee members and the crowd of parents that were here in the audience that night. And I quote, the chair lost control over the crowd and the ladies, I use this term loosely, sounded like hyenas. It just felt like our meeting was held in a project complex, end quote. I find this statement hypocritical considering Carolina is named in the OML as a victim of harassment, sexism, and racism. Her statement undeniably has underlying tones of racism, yet there are four of us up here who have been called racist. 
comparing our compromising our professions and our reputation with these strong allegations is unforgivable. But you didn't stop there, Crystal, did you? No, nope, you went even further by being in contact with Anna Milton from Namaskit Weekly and spewing, spewing your lies in which without reaching out to any of the four of us or getting the facts, Anna wrote a story utilizing all your false allegations. Ironically, this story that was completely untrue and put our names in print and on the internet as sexist and racist was published right after you learned from our chair that you may be censured. Because of, your reckless, because of you and reckless reporting, our names are out there for our fellow community members, our families, our neighbors, and our employers, our employers to see. Sexist and racist, these are serious allegations and all faults. I can't emphasize enough the impact this has had on each of us. As a Jewish woman living in the times that we are, with anti-Semitism at a 400% rise here just in the United States. I am very familiar and have experienced that myself. And I would never, ever want my name associated with racism. In fact, everything I stand for is completely against that. Using racism in the manner to which you did is completely disrespectful to everyone who has actually been a victim of, raceful, of racism and it is shameless. And without, it is no coincidence that since April 23rd, we as a committee and our superintendent have been met with nothing but opposition and attacks. It has made serving on this committee unbearable and has made it nearly impossible for us to get the work we need to get done for our students. Enough is enough. We are not resigning. The only person here that needs to resign and should is you. It is time that we get back to why we were elected. As you can see, I am very aggravated. I'm emotional at you, at Namaskit. Y'all put our names out there like we are sexist and racist. I've never heard anything like that on this committee ever, nor would I condone it and sit on a committee in which I felt was sexist or racist in any way. Anybody else, Bob? Yeah, I have to, being a senior member of the committee for almost 40 years I, I just have to respond to that uh, in my fight and I'm going to read it because if I speak off the cuff I'm going to get too loud and I'll be accused of harassment so in my 44 years serving in the town on the conservation commission fire department and school board I've never seen so much divisiveness and disruption as currently exists Education of the children of our two towns has taken a back seat to personal attacks, threats, and lies. This must stop, and it must stop now. I am particularly outraged by the thin, thinly veiled accusation of sexism and racism. As a husband and father of a daughter, I would, I would pay the price if I practiced or said anything at home regarding that, that matter. Uh, we have raised our daughter to celebrate diversity, and she has not let us down. In terms of racism and sexism directed at the school committee members are offensive, obnoxious, and false. Persons who have subscribed to this type of slander have no place on any committee as their actions serve as a poor example for the students in our district. Perhaps you've heard the quote, or partial quote, don't judge a person uh, by, this, by any color, but by the content of their character. I think that the people of Freetown and Lakeville, I trust the people, uh, people from Freetown and Lakeville, will determine who has character on this board and who does not. Thank you, Bob. Anybody else? No, I, I would only say I, it's a privilege to serve on this committee. I've always done it with integrity and respect for all sides of the issues. And, and I never thought in my tenure on this committee that I would be in a position to defend myself against allegations. Yeah. Um, it, uh, uh, we have to do better as a committee. We have to do better for our students, our staff, and the school community. We, it, it has to improve. We have to stop listening or feeding the manufactured negativity and narrative of a small group of people 
on the first day of school, which as a principal, <laughs> I adore. It's one of my favorite days of the year. And my son started today, and, and we are sitting here having this conversation. We have to be better. The community deserves better. The kids deserve better. Yep. Absolutely. I would like to say I know that um, folks were asked to step down. I have never personally witnessed any of that uh, racism or sexism. Um, so I don't know what, when, or where it happened, or you know the details behind it. I've never personally witnessed that. Um, again, I wanted to try try to divert these two issues. I don't know why they're combined on one open meeting law document. It seems like it's two separate issues, but if we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. first, I personally never witnessed that. And John, how about you yeah. as our chair? As your chair, I, I can sympathize both with your words and with Steve's words. You know, I've always had the utmost of respect for the people both sitting here now and that sat here previously. You know, prior to becoming elected myself, you know, I sat in those chairs over there for the better piece of five years. You know, and I would show up just about every meeting. I'd have my notebook and my pen, and I would sit there, and I would take notes. I would go home afterwards. I would look up things that I didn't know the answers to, and I was just trying to learn. You know, when I finally was elected here, you know, I thought I had a pretty good idea of what went on up here and what the people did. And... There was a lot that went on behind the scenes that I'm, I'm still learning. You know, I've, I've used the, the term, you know, speaking to people before is, you know, even if the group of us up here all understand the rules and the guidelines perfectly and we're all on the same page, the job is still difficult. You know, when, when we're divided and there's, you know, a lot of controversy and politics, the job is impossible. You know, our kids deserve better. Um, that's really all I have. I don't. I don't know how to address something like this. I'm asking you the question: Have you ever witnessed racism or sexism on this committee? Not once. Thank you. Not with this committee or any committee that sat here before. You know, I think. You know, the eight of us are, or I should say, that Caroline is not here to speak for herself, but. You know, we're voted here by the towns because they know there's going to be controversial topics. There's going to be some heated discussions, you know, and they trust us to, to handle those conversations. You know, we, we have different backgrounds and different opinions, different experiences, and I think people respect that. And I think that allows us to, to have these conversations. That's all I have. I, I know you made a, a denial statement to, to the local newspaper too, so how do we formalize the complaint and how do we formalize that response? Um, and then I assume that goes to the Attorney General. Do you want me to, want me to take this one? I would love for you to <laughs> sure. take this one. So within um, 14 days of the date that it was submitted, which was August 20th, you have to distribute it and meet, so you've done those two things. And then you need to write a response and take any remedial measure. That measure, that response would go to Ms. Ng and then we would send a copy to the Attorney General's office. So the Attorney General doesn't look at it until after that time has, has passed. Um, so I think as Ms. Brightman said, there's sort of multiple levels here. Some mm -hmm. of them may not be open meeting law directly related. So I think um, you, know, you need to sort of figure out how you're gonna handle that. Typically in terms of process, you'll vote on how you wanna respond to this. Um, and it could be based on sort of paragraph or in its entirety. And then um, the cleanest way is typically to delegate to one or two people to work usually with me to write a response consistent with your um, vote and then um, to submit it. So that otherwise the committee would have to meet again to discuss the, the draft, which is Correct. a lot of process. So the quickest way is just to delegate the, the authority. Thank you, Kelly. Sure. Anybody? Question, comment? Can I say, yes, I have a yes, please. comment slash question, I guess. So I think we need to address the open meeting law portion of it, right? Because we haven't talked about that aspect of it. And then separately, there are these allegations out there. So how do we, you're saying there's multiple levels and different actions. So addressing the open meeting law, you kind of spoke to that. And then everything else, how do you, how do we move, 
how do we get beyond this, right? Like schools in session, right? We are, I don't know, we're supposed to be supporting the students and the staff, and I'm not sure how this is getting to that, how we get to that point, and how this is helping that cause. Right. Um, so, the, so I guess that what I was, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time, which isn't a good idea. <laughs> um, so I think the first three, so basically the first three paragraphs, I think are directly over me law. The fourth one, I don't understand, I don't know that it is, but certainly if Ms. Ng wants to, um, you know, elaborate on the point, we can also determine if another investigation or other action is appropriate. That can be a vote or that can be for, you know, you can also sort of say this doesn't need open meeting law response right now, but we're gonna look into this further. Um, so that sort of depends on how many, um, sort of what's established and, and how you go from there. Because I don't know that there's enough here. Um, and if I, if I miss, if I don't want to misspeak, but I, I don't, I've heard that I don't think anyone said that they've seen harassment or racism in the, the meeting. So I think we'd have to have an understanding of what the allegations are so we could look into them further as needed. Um, so, so that's, that's the answer to that part. Oh, meanwhile, you guys need to discuss the first three paragraphs first, um, and then we can respond on those to the AG's office. Does that answer your question? I think so. Okay. Kelly, thank you. All right. As part of the complaint was <clears throat> the reason cited on the agenda was discussing negotiation strategies for non-union personnel. When the group entered executive session, we spoke to, I can find my minutes at the same time. We spoke to um, <clears throat> um, how the, the survey was going to be presented. A question arose about a possible open meeting law violation from a regional finance subcommittee meeting. The question was directed towards Ms. Singh, who is the sitting committee chair. Um, Steve, Can I just clarify, the question was, was the meeting posted, period? Yeah, correct. What question was? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Was the meeting posted? It's hard to go through this because it's, there's so many mistruths and discrepancies. For example, like that, a perfect example. There was no big discussion, it was a question. Was the meeting posted? And it was an executive session, it wasn't an open session like it's talked about in there. And just further clarification, and forgive me, some of it was a bit wonky because I was virtual right so mm -hmm. I wasn't even physically present but you were talking about an open meeting law violation that was filed by a gentleman in Georgia I believe mm -hmm. Correct. and I think the the conversation was about potentially opening ourselves up to other violations and the question was again simply was the meeting posted because we don't want to be mm -hmm. open to other violations that's correct. So the 731 meeting was posted. So that's the answer is yes. Yep, right. And so that was the rationale behind mm -hmm. that part of it speaks, the complaint. Yep. It speaks later in the complaint that the meeting minutes or meeting notes it speaks to um, were not available. Um, that is correct because we had not voted the minutes yet. So we voted the minutes um, the last time we met as a committee on the 21st, we voted the minutes. Um, so it, it, it is accurate that the minutes were not available. That is correct. Um, we had not been, to my knowledge, accepting any meeting minutes without having the minutes. Right. So when we vote minutes, and they are typically voted the following meeting that we have. 
um, included in our packets are the meet the minutes that we are voting so basically what he's saying is that yes we did not have the meeting minutes available in executive session she's correct but the reasoning is because we hadn't voted the meet it the minutes mm -hmm. for that yet so we couldn't possibly have it so another mm -hmm. inaccuracy So coming out of that was a question about a potential open meeting law violation for the finance subcommittee. And I believe at the time, uh, Ms. Zing said that no, that was not, not, a, uh, not a violation. That in fact, it was not a formalized meeting. It just happened to be a, a phone call. So that is, that is how I would address well, that is how I would recommend, you know, addre addressing this complaint. You know, through the chair, Kelly, you, you look Thank you. Confused. So I just want to... Does I that do. give you um, enough information? I don't know. I want to restate it because I'm not sure. Thank you. I appreciate that, Sylvia. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the, I think we're on paragraphs two and three. So for number three, you understand the allegation to be that there weren't meeting notes available for the executive session. The reason was because you hadn't approved them yet. Correct. And once you approve them, they become available. Correct. And you approve mm -hmm. them at the next meeting. Correct. Okay. And for the, the paragraph that starts in the next topic of discussion, um, that was about a alleged violation of the Regional Finance Subcommittee. And what you're saying is that someone asked a question to make sure that the meeting last night was, uh, that, sorry, that the meeting, that this meeting was posted to avoid something yes, like that. Yes, we asked if the meeting had been posted because a couple of us had heard that the meeting wasn't posted and we were trying because we already had an open meeting violation to make sure that we weren't having any more open my meeting violations so we merely asked if it was posted okay thank you so then you need to just address the first paragraph i think so the purpose of the executive session and whether that's what was discussed without giving details of what was discussed that hasn't been public yet. Mm -hmm. The discussion was how we were going to present the survey and how the, um, the meeting was going to proceed. Yeah, I mean, through I the chair. I don't have the specifics off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. I mean, through the chair, right, Kelly? I mean, I certainly, we, we respect your opinion here, right? And if you think we, I mean, it's a little vague, right? We were talking around the superintendent's evaluation, right? We're talking about a survey that's evaluating the superintendent. We have a superintendent that's going into year three. Um, could have conversations gone towards renewals, contract extensions, you name it. it uh, in my opinion, it absolutely could have coming out of that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you think that reason number two doesn't necessarily, if it's a stretch and, and we need to accept accountability for that, we can. I'm not, we're not opposed, we're not allergic to accountability up here, folks, mm -hmm. we're not. Um, I, I, would, I would leave that up to you. Um, but I, the, the rest of it, I, I, don't, I don't find it Incredible. I, I know everyone's in, entitled to their own perspe perspectives and, and everything else, but I mean, again, guys, the, our communities are very smart. This open meeting law violation came on 820. The meeting where there was the whole issue started from with the sharing of, of materials was on 731. This name knew that we were looking into it, right? And it's, again, folks, let's, let's connect the dots here. How did that open meeting law complaint get in the hands of the Damascus prior to us discussing it publicly? What are we doing? So I'll take the L on the first paragraph. If, 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 your, if your legal opinion is that we stretched the reason for going into executive session, that's fine. Um, we'll just take the feedback and move forward. That's my opinion, but the rest of it it is it is what it is it's disgusting it was literally using a public document to slander the four of us with very strong words that again i never want to be associated with and yet i am in print thank you 
But, but through the chair, perhaps this is a question for you. Will makes a good point about accountability. If we're all participating in executive session, in having conversation conversations, whether they're arguably on the agenda or off, aren't we all subject to the complaint? Yes. Including the person including who filed the complaint? Yes. <laughs> it would be the body. That's the, the body. Right. So Correct. So you filed the complaint again. Just the chair, I mean, no, I'm not causing you problems, John, but nope, you lead you. the discussion as the chair and you're not on the complaint. Yep. And we participate and respond to something the chair leads the discussion on. And it's just, it's an interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I will take responsibility if I allowed it to get out of hand. Well, go ahead. Uh, just point of order if you're in an executive session and you feel that the topic is straying from the reason, what you do is you get up and walk out. You don't stay there and sit there and be part of it and then file on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I agree. It's vindictive is all it was. Mm -hmm. So in terms of answering that the question that I think Will posed, I don't know the facts well enough and it's hard because it was executive session. Um, so what I think we can kind of give it to the AG's office that might make sense to sort of review the purposes of executive session as a remedial action to make sure we're that and, and what their expectations are if folks think that there's a concern that maybe you're veering too far astray of the stated purpose. I mean, I don't know if anyone raised an objection during the meeting about that. That would be a, a good way of sort of making sure that everyone's sticking to the, the point. Um, or certainly walking out makes the point as well. Um, <laughs> so, sure. so that's where the question is. I, I mean, it, we could be in the gray area of where the superintendent's evaluation is public, as we all know, but, you know, um, to the extent you were looking at broader contract issues, I mean, it, was this a, you know, the best notice ever? No. <laughs> and, it, you know, could you have possibly strayed? Maybe a little bit. Um, but I don't know. There's a difference between, a, you know, outright violation and sort of a, we crossed the line, yeah. I guess, I mean, which is still technically a violation to be clear, but. And I'll own that. Yeah. Um, I'll own that. So we can, so I guess the, the question for you is sort of, you know, again, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know specifically how far under the umbrella you went versus how far outside the umbrella you went. So that's sort of for you to, to discuss, but we can certainly report to the, to Ms. Ng and to the AG that, you know, to the extent you went beyond the scope that you should have um, in terms of the surveys or what have you, then that would be something that you want to rectify. And, and again, maybe it would be a refresher on the purposes of executive session. And I know that um, Will referenced the DESE Guide to Superintendent Evaluations. Um, it's a fabulous read. Mm -hmm. um, but it does kind of talk about public versus private and the open meeting law. So we can also talk about that as, again, sort of a remedial effort to make sure that we're complying. Thank you, Kelly. Any comment, discussion, anybody? Okay. Um, I would like to move on to the superintendent evaluation. Oh, one sec, sorry. May I? So I think you want to take a vote as to how you want to respond to this and then delegate authority to respond to it before you move on. Okay. <clears throat> I would like to respond to the complaint. First, explaining executive session minutes um, were not approved at the time of the complaint. And the next time the committee met, uh, those minutes were approved. I'll respond with saying the reason we <clears throat> went into executive session was to outline how the meet how that open session was going to proceed and how the survey results were going to be presented who was going to present them we <clears throat> went into the discussion about the regional finance subcommittee meeting as someone was questioning if it was another potential open meeting law complaint as we were reviewing one currently at the time. Okay. 
I will share my own statement and others I heard in this meeting today <clears throat> about the views of the committee um, for some of the uh, the harassment the sexist comments that were alleged I would like to make a recommendation um, not a recommendation I will say that the committee members present um, no one is willing to resign their positions as school committee members I will apologize for allowing this executive session to go out of control I will recommend that our committee as a whole has a formal review of the executive session guidelines as well as the DESE guidance for a superintendent evaluation. Anyone at the table have anything to add to that? Steve, Th thank you for your, your thoughtful response. I, I like the idea of delegate. I think you formally have to craft a response. Um, perhaps Ms. Brightman, given you're not mentioned in the complaint, if you want to join Mr. Burke in, in getting something together, and then do we formally read the response at a meeting or we just submit it to the... So the response is public, so you can formally, um, you would give it to Ms. Eng and we give it to the AG, so you don't mm -hmm. necessarily okay. have to, I don't think, as part of the process read it. I can, I can double check. Um, but so it, it's a public response. <laughs> I just, I, sorry, I, and I, I don't mean to bel <laughs> belabor the point. No, so when you talked about a discussion about the um, open meeting law violation during the executive session, that what you're referring to as a discussion was a one question about whether that meeting was posted or not, right? Or was there more discussion? Well, yeah, so through the chair, there was there was discussion around the um, survey that went out as part of to the community for feedback. No, wait, I'm sorry. I'm, um, I, the question about I think the chair is in the meeting getting out of hand, and I just want to make sure or control, and I want to make sure I, I understand what that. I would argue that the meeting didn't get out of hand. It was a it was a disagreement in executive session that have, has happened in every school committee in the United States from the end of now until the end of time. Um, wasn't out of control. Wasn't out of control. Okay. Um, so in terms of the, so I understand that, so there was a reference to possibly having the conversation be tied to negotiations of a, so maybe it would make sense to kind of have a, a multiple part motion just so that we don't get lost. I think that's what Ms. Brightman said to begin with. So in terms of response, do you want to delegate, so you can delegate the response to whoever you would like. That might be step one, then we can talk about what the response would look like. Do you want to do that? Could you kindly say that again? Kelly? Sure. <laughs> would you like, to, so you can move to delegate to one or two people to work with council to respond to the open meeting law complaint to Ms. Ng and to the AG's <coughs> office consistent with the vote that this committee will take tonight regarding the response. Okay. So through the chair, it should probably be you and Courtney. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. I will accept them. I will entertain a motion to assign the crafting of a response to myself and Courtney Brightman to review with legal counsel and to submit to Ms. Ng and the AG's office. So you're delegating authority consistent with the vote of the committee tonight? Yes. I will entertain a, a motion for that. Okay. So motion. Moved. Second. second. <laughs> no. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Okay. Motion passes. Okay. So I'm going to take the so then I think we need to decide how we're responding to each of the paragraphs because I think there it's a little bit confusing. So on paragraph one, that was the gray area of whether there was a discussion about negotiations or preparation for negotiations or strategy for negotiations for non-union personnel. 
Mm -hmm. I, I understand if I'm hearing correctly that the conversation may have gone beyond that. That's correct. Perhaps inadvertently. But was that conversation tied to strategy for negotiations for non-union personnel? In my opinion, it was. So I think that you should take a vote on that. Okay. I will entertain a vote to say that the in intended discussion for that executive session um, had impact on strategies for negotiation for non-union personnel. Got a motion? Um, so moved. So okay. For discussion purposes. Kelly, we, we never got there. Yeah, we didn't. You that. know what I mean? So for you're asking us to vote on whether or not yay or nay on that one. It's, we, we never got there. So um, I don't, you know what I mean? It's fine. So that was the intention, but the sort of disagreement in the executive session prevented that from happening? Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Yeah, I would say accurate also. So it sounds like the issue is probably that you went astray from what the intent stated purpose of the executive session was. Yep. So that might be something that where you need to do a little bit of remediation on because you're supposed mm -hmm. to stick to the, the posted topics. Okay, I think that's so, fair. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I guess a, <laughs> the the motion would be with regard to the first paragraph regarding the stated purpose of the executive session. Um, although the, the committee intended to meet with regard to uh, or under purpose the two one um, ultimately the conversation was derailed and you were unable to you did not speak on that purpose yep okay that's correct and then you should probably talk about a, what you want to do as a remedy for that if any is needed my suggestion is as a remedy uh, the eight of us review the executive session guidelines as as chair I will work on enforcing that better in an open conversation just as an idea as well maybe uh, Tapping in Glenn Kucher from MASC to help us with that conversation okay. would be a solid move as well. Okay. Is there anything additional we need to address? In your opinion, Kelly? So for that paragraph one now, so the idea is that you're going to come up with some kind of remedy. Someone's going to reach out to MASC about additional mm -hmm. training? Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, and then for the next topic of discussion was the um, the violation of the school committee with um, sorry open meeting law with respect to the finance subcommittee. And I think if I hear correctly that the conversation wasn't as much a conversation as it was a question asking whether this mm -hmm. July thirty first meeting was properly posted. posted. Okay. So I think you can if that's what you're voting. I think you can say you voted on that and it was not really a violation it was a confirmation of mm -hmm. <laughs> process you were trying to avoid a violation yes. right so if you can that can be part of your motion it's a wasted time here right now i know um oh sorry to go through this it's I, not it's not to make sure fault. i have the right it's response not your fault i'm just pointing um, out that it's not a wasted time here right now. so the so the response to that you would vote on would be um that you find that there was no violation there that in fact it was a it was not a discussion it was a question quick question to make sure you were not by the open meeting law is that Okay, so I think you should vote on, on that. Um, and then the minutes, I think, I, I think I'm good. We had the issue on the minutes of um, that they were not available. They were, they were not provided because they hadn't been approved yet. They were approved at the following meeting. Were they determined to still be confidential or were they released to the public? Mm -hmm. yes. Sorry, Renee, I put you on the hot seat. Yeah, no, they were released. <laughs> okay. At the week and at the last, the last meeting, correct? Yep, we voted them the last meeting. Okay. So they were posted okay. the following day. We voted them like the 21st. Okay. Um, and then for the last paragraph, I guess the first question is whether this, whether you 
believe this to be an open meeting law violation. And the second related question is whether this warrants further investigation attention. How else do you want to proceed with that? Apologies, so, maybe. <laughs> can I um, Courtney, go say ahead. something? In my perspective, I don't think, in my opinion, this shouldn't be addressed with the open meeting law. I think we should say we don't think it pertains to it. I, it it's a separate sort of issue, I think. I don't know. It seems like it was sort of put under the guise of the open meeting law, but I don't really see how it pertains to it. So I don't know why we would address it. So it's the school committee's view. That's my that? view. No, that's my no, 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 view. I'm giving the next <laughs> sentence to see if we can wrap this part up. Um, so if that's your view, then the response would basically be, to that you deny it, we deny these allegations. Yeah. So that you don't, you don't say that. Um, and then you would say that um, you don't believe these are open meeting law violations to be addressed here. Um, you know, X number of you said that you've never seen this. I mean, it may be worth another sentence just because it's a public document. I don't think you want to leave it hanging. Right. But um, you can, to the extent you deny it, you can deny it or say whatever other things you want to say just to sort of have the record be clear. But I don't think that, I would agree that I don't, my opinion is that this does not really pertain to the open meeting law. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. So you need to, <laughs> so I just said all those things, you need to actually have a motion and vote to, that that is your answer on this. <laughs> I, I'm okay with that, but can can I read this before it goes? <laughs> to get, do, will we have a chance to read this document? Of course. Yeah. So okay. cool. for you to read it, you can read it, but you can't comment because that would be deliberating outside of the open meeting law. Okay. So if you want, you can have another meeting then discuss it or review it okay um you can certainly review it but if you're going to comment on it it's just a lot to process and it we is. covered quite a bit and i i just think you know the denial of the allegations and that it's not part of the open meeting law combined with the first couple of paragraphs i, I think we've gotten far yeah. um, but just seeing this in a document i think would be helpful mm -hmm. not deliberating just at some point reading it okay if the committee as a whole wants to see a draft of this and be able to participate in the editing of it I could request an extension for the complaint response and we could have another meeting to do that I mean I think that we pretty much narrowed down what's mm -hmm. truth what's not truth you know what we're going to say and what we're not going to say again 10 percent of this is an open meeting violation 90 percent is straight slander and i think based on the fact that we have facts and we have a response that i mean i would like like steve considering this is a public document that my name is attached to um, i would like to see the response as Absolutely. steve would but i mean i'm not sure we need to have another meeting and take more time away from our children for more of this. That was for tonight. Right, and, I, and I'd prefer to read the response and not in a local newspaper. And not in a local sure. newspaper. That doesn't yeah. have the facts. Oh, I can appreciate that. So you can review it, you just can't deliberate on it by email. So that's, we will. that's the line. Yeah. We will, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Is there anything else that? Thank you, Kelly. I need to stay for a minute. Um, no. Nothing else, Kelly. Thank you very much. Um, you are welcome to stay for the remainder. I, I actually would like her to, and I'd like us to move to number eight before we go to the evaluation. Okay. Um, I have a couple of things to say. Not surprising. Um, there was a comment made previously about um, Glenn Kucher from MASC, and I'm paraphrasing. Said something to the effect of, "Yes, it is a. Um, I, won't, I won't use the term fireable offense, but I will use the term that it is improper." Um, I want the community to hear this. Every school committee member who is new must go to MASC training. At MASC training. Everybody receives packets of information, much of which goes onto a flash drive. On that flash drive, 
and, and Mr. Vice Chair, I would like you to read again um, the DESE document, because that document, which, which Mr. Sankowitz read at the bottom that talks about confidentiality on page 13. I'll read. I have well. Any evidence collected by or shared with the school committee is part of the superintendent's evaluation particularly when such evidence may communicate information about students, families, and or staff must adhere to all confidentiality rules and regulations. That was provided by the MA MASC to all new school committee members. So there is absolutely no way that Glenn Kuchar, the head of MASC, said that it's an egregious mistake, nor did DESI, because it's a DESI document as well. I will take accountability for things. I sat here and took accountability for what happened with our budget, but when other people don't take accountability for what they do, and when my staff has to hear the word fireable offense, I do not take that kindly. It is improper and it is immoral. And, and so I, the other thing is we are here for students to teach students and to teach our children how to model behavior in the world. And that includes accountability. It includes saying, I'm sorry when we do something wrong. We own it, we move forward. And everybody in this room and everybody on television has made mistakes. No one has an issue with that. It's when we don't take accountability for it that we create a society in chaos. And as superintendent, we're done. And, and I agree with Bob, this has to stop. Whatever side of the fence somebody is on is their business. But when it comes to attacking people to destroy good people's lives and careers, no, that, that doesn't work for me. So I want to go one step farther. I would like Mr. Sankowitz to read the um, public records request that was sent under a pseudonym. I don't know if I have that in front of me yet, Mr. Strauss. Certainly, go in my phone and dig it so up. You, so um, you, it was it was mentioned publicly just now. Yep, but I would like some. I would like to add to the fact that a public records request, and that's why I wanted Kelly to stay because I really want to talk to this community about the amount of money that this district has to spend on public records requests. I could hire a para, I could hire another teacher. It's getting ridiculous. So we had someone, and, and Mr. Sankwitz talked about it, send a public records request, not to me as a public records um, person, but to John Burke and to you, I believe, Renee. Um, again, asking for health records, asking for proof, asking, oh, no public comment, asking for a number of things in regard to my health by a town administrator who used a pseudonym, not even their own name. And yet for three months, I listened meeting after meeting after meeting, hearing that I'm not transparent in regard to the budget, that we need to do an audit in regard to central office because central office isn't transparent. Well, I use my name in everything. So to use the name Jim Jones, a cult leader, is disturbing to me. I think an audit of Mr. Sankwitz, would you, uh, Mr. Burke, you received it as was well? My name on no, Jim Jones's name is on it. Was my name on it? Yeah, it was. It was. Okay, so let's not say that it was a pseudo name. There was an old email address, and I explained this to you when I was selling essential oils. I did explain that, and it was a signature line that wasn't taken off. There, but it was my name. My name was on it, and I didn't ask for health records. I asked for it your time that you were absent from work and your timesheet records because <laughs> I wanted to know how much time you had taken off because we have paid a lot of money for stipends for you to be out 
And so I just wanted to know the time records. If there's no time sheets, there's no time sheets. But I wasn't asking for anything to do with your health. So, I asked for time records. So the point of order, I don't, I don't want to we'll get into a, a, a no. back and forth here, but just one more because we do have to get into your evaluation and through the chair, if I can just mm -hmm. make one more statement is Ms. Petty, I, I think where the animosity comes from is you've stood up at that podium quite a bit and asked for better communication, transparency, right? If those are things that you wanted in the spirit of communicating with our superintendent, I think the expectation would be to go and sit down with him. I, I understand we all send a million emails a day and things happen. I, I don't understand how a name Jim Jones would have a be in a signature line if it's your email address. I don't know. But I, I think the point that we're trying to make here is the, You guys have gone too far. It's <laughs> I, I think it's 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 ironic, right, given that you're calling so, for So this is what I want everybody to hear. And I don't get a response though. I still don't get a We response. talk about budget all the time. And our towns don't have a tremendous amount of money. In the last three and a half months, we have received more public records requests than you could ever imagine. And by law, we have to go through them. But this is what happens. I want everybody to understand this. It's not as simple as opening an email. We have to go to IT, and it is hours for our small IT department to go through every single email that might have a potential word. So for example, we had someone, our last one, we have two people who have asked to get specific information on the public survey that went out. As if we don't believe you, so we want to see it all. So then we have to go through every single survey, 512 of them. Anybody who put up public comments, that has to be redacted. The amount of time that that takes, and then we have to send it to Kelly to make sure that we have not violated any laws. So we had a public records request recently. I'm involved in something called new superintendent induction program. Every superintendent in the state must be part of this program. It's part of my contract. It's not an issue. It's a three-year program. We had someone have the nerve to ask, we want proof that you went every communication who is the people? Who are the people in this cohort that I'm with? Who is my um, mentor? Who is the head of the program? 770 emails in regard to new superintendent induction program has to then be downloaded by IT. It then all has to be sent to Kelly's office, who goes through every single line item. We then have to redact the amount of time that this district is spending a public records request is out of control. And then we get yelled at that our legal budget is too high. No. So therefore, we had someone stand up and say, how dare you charge us? By law, and this is why I wanted you here, Kelly, are we allowed to charge for this information? How much time does it go through each piece of paper? So we had one situation where there were 3,250 pieces of information, which means we can charge based upon each page, correct? Correct for printing, and you also need to charge for review and redacting. We assume about a minute a page, typically, because we have to make sure there's no confidential student record information, no personnel information, or other information that can't be disclosed. So certainly some pages take longer, some are shorter, but it takes a lot of time. And then we're the bad guy when we say, no, you have to pay us. We don't have the time. And I want you as citizens to understand this. So we have a town administrator who stands here and talks to me as if I don't care about our budget. And all we do is spend frivolously. And yet we get a public records request on the days I was here or not here, instead of coming into my office picking up the phone. Double standards don't work for me. I owned what I did. I want people to start owning what they do. You don't respond to me. You wonder okay. why? Okay, so, <laughs> Mr. Strauss, thank you for, for that. We, do, we Through the chair, we do have to move forward and get into the evaluation piece here, because that is the, the main reason why we're here tonight. Um, mm -hmm. 
Sure. So, uh, no, I have Thank you, Kelly. Dismissed? You are. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you so Kelly, much thank for you. everything. Um, take it away. We're, I mean, we gotta, we got to get into this. Okay. Based off a statement from Alan, is there any discussion at the table for that? Okay. Uh, oh, oh, how much you charge? What's the charge on something like that? A, you have to do a good. You have to do a good faith fee estimate, <laughs> um, and we do provide what the charge is. So it's it's relatively low. It doesn't even remotely cover the actual cost. And just doing the good faith fee estimate sometimes can cost as much as it takes because you still have to pull the documents and count them. Um, I believe there was a recent public records request for our legal bills um, that we've pulled and the vast majority of them are for public records requests and I will also say that the vast majority of them are from a very small subset of people yep, yep. so it's the Not same surprised. people asking for information repeatedly so when can we start charging tomorrow Immediately. So, so we sent out a public response today there are certain things that are you can find in two minutes that that we don't charge for that but we said for the rest of the information, it will cost X amount of dollars. Good. Good. Thank you. Goodbye again. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly, thank you for joining us tonight. All right, moving on to the superintendent evaluation. Previously, we had heard. Alan present in an open meeting. Individually, we received evidence packets for our review to assemble our individual evaluations for the indicators listed in the DESE rubric. It is at this point we will go over these indicators. So through the chair and the chair of the superintendent evaluation subcommittee as well, yeah. is how you're envisioning this to go is we will just go down and discuss his three goals and a rating per those three goals and then go down the four standards as well and discuss our ratings with, with, with commentary. Um, my understanding of it is that the superintendent evaluation subcommittee will then pull that data, take it, write the summative, share that with the committee, which we will then stamp and report out in open session, correct? Correct, or I guess we can get an opinion or just post. I think you have to, by statute, post it, but you would have to sign it and the committee signs it first. But yeah, something like that. But so Ms. Blum and I will kind of capture the information, come up with a draft based on everyone's input, and move forward. Okay, thank you. So then, I just then to that, set that final program. evaluation is posted. Correct. Correct. With the, with the idea, right, for the committee, right, with the idea that we get this kind of put to bed by our next school committee meeting, which, to our superintendent's credit, he has been asking for this feedback for quite some time. And this will certainly help determine goals, rooms for growth going into this school year. Fair? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Being my first try, I would like to just go one by one through the indicators for each standard. I would, I, I would be I think, open I think to you said to start with the goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we start with the goals, John. So we would start with the professional practice goal, the student learning goal, and then the school improvement goals. Yeah. So the professional, um, his professional practice goal, and Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going off the evidence that, that you passed. passed um, it came to us, right? Um, I believe your professional practice goal was district and community communication, right? Can I read it for the committee so that we're all on the same page and we know what we're evaluating at this point? Yes, please. So 
During the recruitment and search process, communication and engagement were identified as areas in the need of focus and visibility that my predecessor developed, but must be continued. Building trustful relationships with FLRSD families, key stakeholders through communication that is timely and responsive, collaborative and inclusive is paramount. Building relationships with key stakeholders through visibility, regular meetings, intentional relationships with key stakeholders through visibility, regular meetings and intentional opportunities for engagement. Um, effective, honest, timely and open communication will be promoted through the development plans to um, operationalize communications protocols processes within our schools district wide. Okay, there's a lot there. Um, and I can, if you you want me to, to pick it off, I can certainly. Sure, and I could, through the chair, I could chime in during the formative phase, this was exceeded, that goal. So if you want to start the discussion, well, feel free. If not, I'm happy to chime in. Yep, absolutely. So uh, through the first year, obviously, we had them as exceeded, right? For me, I, I do think um, I have it as met. So I did take a step back, um, just given the fact that the superintendent has been very, very open and honest with the fact that he has to continue to communicate. We've heard feedback from the towns that sometimes towns receive some documents, the other town does not, right? In a regional district, there are a myriad of, of stakeholders that our superintendent has to communicate with. And I think maybe working with him as a committee and, and coming up with some protocols in place and subgroups um, could potentially be of use. Um, and I know I'm not telling the superintendent anything he hasn't heard from us already. Um, communication for him is already is, is going to be continue to be a, a focus. Um, and it and it certainly needs to be. So that's I have him as a met there. We did have him as exceeded. Um, so that's where I'm at. I, I have um, sort of a met and exceeded as well. Um, I think, you know, some of this is feedback for the committee we, we talked about, and I think we have to hold to it, doing this on, on every year uh, moving forward and not over a two-year process. Mm -hmm. So that's more feedback and, and something we can look forward to. I'd like to see a similar goal, but but I thought, uh, Mr. Strush, you did a great job presenting your evidence. Um, mm -hmm. I, I watched that from afar. I think the way you've established consistent routines around hiring, um, the hiring practices in, in, in the district is a marked improvement. And I think this district has always prided itself on cultivating our own leaders. And, and you've done a nice job with doing that. Um, you know, Mr. Higgins and, and others, and also seeing the pride in the principals presenting their school improvement plans, not to mention teachers coming in being part of school committee and showing off their work in different curriculum programs. I, I think you've done a great job in this area. Anyone else at the table? I agree with Steve. I would like to see a little bit more communication, but I'm hoping that he'll be able to have more communication openly. Well, I, I look at this uh, in comparison to the Holcomb County uh, 10 superintendents that I worked under or with, uh, and based on based on that, I have to agree with the uh, with Steve. Uh, everything I everything I rate, I have to in my mind compare to all the people that have served in that position before. And that's what I compare it to. Okay. I had um, met for the school, and I kind of echo Mr. Sinkowitz's sentiments. Um, I can speak from my own experience but as a parent prior to joining the committee and on the PTO. I think there was wonderful communication. My only area of concern, I guess, would be uh, more so with the towns. Um, they're certainly an important stakeholder, so um, I'd like to see what we can do to improve that communication yeah and, and being more solutions oriented here right I, I think there's just so many members on both sides of each town that, that expect communication right so so just coming up with a way to strategically mm -hmm. be able to communicate to all stakeholders at once and make your job easier um, be something we can certainly talk about for sure I'm good
myself. I, I think he, uh, <clears throat> I give a reading of, of Matt for, the, for this goal. Should we go through the individual indicators? It, I no, think the next one is student learning. learning goal. Okay. Yeah, sorry, the next sorry. one is student learning goal. So, in, and I'll read it again for the committee so that we're all on the same page. In order to move students toward proficiency and above on annual state assessments, MCAS, FLRSD will increase the exposure to comprehensive strategies and writing across content areas. Data will affect three to 5% increases on formative benchmark assessments and used regularly and monthly in classes and triannually in district. As a result, the district will increase student meeting, students meeting or exceeding standards on spring assessment by 10% from the 2021 results note um, results from MCAS are not available until fall and they're reflective for the purpose of adjusting future goals, right? Time should be spent using district formative assessments to create predictors of success, trends, and patterns towards high stakes assessments. Um, I can dive in there as well. Um, one of the things I do truly admire, I have him as a met there. Um, one of the things I do admire about Superintendent Strauss is um, he is an instructional leader. I, I truly do believe he knows what is needed in order to push the district forward instructionally. Um, and I think when you look back at him, we're going through budget sessions and advocating for support positions. That was all strategic um, in really trying to push instruction and, and improve student outcomes. Um, so I do have him as a met there. I. I um I mean, this is just a timing issue. I have significant progress given the timing of the MCAS release. I know we look right. forward to this fall with a presentation of the data. Um, I, I think, you know, we could easily change the mark or depending on when we go to print here. I think the other thing I noted in this is the district work on chronically absent students. I think you've, you've really highlighted that goal and presented strong evidence in that regard. And for that, I have him as met and exceeded on that one because we have come a long way. And it's not an easy feat to uh, get past. Bob? Yeah, I have him as, uh, as met too. Uh, but you have to consider we have some of the finest uh, teachers in the area. They come here just and then we don't pay as much as around the district and yet we're ranked very, very high in the state. Uh, and part of it, you have to take credit to the superintendent as well as, uh, like I said, our outstanding uh, educators that uh, put us in that position. Uh, I have no problem with them. Yet. I also had Matt. You know, and I think a, a goal this fall, maybe we can look at other assessments and tie it not solely to MCAS, but look at it in other directions with right. the curriculum director. Mm -hmm. Crystal? Um, I had significant progress. Okay. Myself, um, I had met for this for this goal, like where the where the MCAT scores are, where the AP scores are. To present really well. The last one is a school improvement goal. Right, and Mr. Strauss, correct me if I'm wrong, this one is around retaining, recruiting, and hiring quality staff. Correct. Got you. Um, so we must continue to build upon a culture of care and empowerment in order to retain our outstanding staff and ensure we develop an effective and transparent system to hire and onboard our newest hires. This will allow us to consistently and collaboratively provide a high quality of and challenging academic experience for every FLRSD student. Um, and there are obviously key actions there, which we should have reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have them as met there. Um, I think um, the process for bringing in um, new staff has is, is become, it always was, but I think it's become a lot more um, collaborative where a lot of voices are at the table and heard. Um, I think the hiring of our middle school principal is a, an outstanding example of that. Um, so I have him um, for a school improvement goal as, as a met as well. I also have him as a. I met for the uh, same reason as, as uh, Will just uh, stated. Mm -hmm. So, 
I may have mixed up my notes. This this was a met in the formative phase. I have it as an exceeded, and I think I noted um, mostly through your leadership the presentations of the principals with regards to their own school improvement plans mm -hmm. and the pride in the students and the teachers they when they come to these meetings. Um, I think you've made a great impact on, on that. I had um, this as Matt. Crystal? Significant progress, just due to the high turnover rate at central office. That impacted. I had the goal as Matt. through the chair at this point we are going to hop into the the standards mm -hmm. um, I think we'd be here all night if we tackled every single indicator um, so really I think we should go down and just handle it with the four standards um, taking a look at where you rated each indicator and obviously that would inform your rating for standard one instructional leadership standard two management and operations standard three family and community engagement um, standard four professional culture obviously if there is some feedback within the standards pertaining to a certain indicator I think Mr. Strauss would certainly want to hear that um, but I think in order to streamline this process just a little bit we could just tackle the, the ratings per indicator but I would refer to, to you the chair and then Steve the chair of the superintendent evaluation subcommittee Personally, I'm okay with it. Steve? Yes. Okay. So standard one mm -hmm. is around um, instructional leadership. Um, I do have um, Mr. Strauss as far as being the instructional leader of this district, I think. Um, I have him proficient for standard one. I have Mr. Strauss as proficient, standard one. I have Mr. Strauss as proficient for standard one. I have Ms. May. I have Mr. Strauss as proficient um, in all areas of standard one, and I think his um, the work on the goals is strong mm -hmm. evidence of his educational leadership in the district. Mm -hmm. I had a rating of proficient for all indicators on standard one. Okay. And just for the, that was proficient in all areas during the formative phase. Correct. Okay. Crystal? Use improvement. Standard two would be under the management and operations standard. Um, for me, um, I believe if we're gonna, standard two, uh, as part of his formative, he was proficient in all areas, Mr. Strauss was, and I don't think this is coming a, to a surprise of anybody here, including Mr. Strauss. Um, standard two for management and operations, I do have him as a needs improvement. Um, that was not across all indicators, but, but some of the big ones that, that I deemed um, to be pretty important, specifically pertaining to budget. Um, with that being said, I am confident that, that the superintendent has already started to, to fix um, what had kind of transpired during the budget process. I think the hiring of Jack is a huge piece of that. Um, I think Jack and him working together to put some um, kind of catch nets in place in the business office is huge. Um, so he is a needs improvement here, uh, but I don't think that's a surprise to him or, or anyone else. I also have him proficient in all indicators except for the fiscal, fiscal systems pertaining to the budget that I have needs improvement. Otherwise, proficient. I, I have the same uh, particular note of, uh, Noteworthy is the uh, improvements to school safety that have been made under his leadership. I rate the same for the for the fiscal systems um, as a needs improvement. Um, 
also the environment I had as need improvement. Um, it seemed like the, the transportation um, was an issue throughout the year and you know, not for lack of effort in firefighting, but we didn't quite get there. And we had some significant staffing issues that I think caused, um, <coughs> you know, our maintenance, you know, of our building and grounds not to be where we, you know, we all want it to be. Um, but as a whole for this indicator, I, I rated proficient. Just for the record, this was proficient in all areas during the formative phase. I have sort of a combination of proficient and needs improvement, but it's more of a, 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 de a developing or emerging skill in the areas around the budget. Um, collaboration, you know, t getting a, a better grasp of the budget and, and building relationships with the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there was some pointed feedback in the formative on that, but it's, it's a developing area. Um, on the fiscal piece. So there's specific notes on a certain indicator for me. I had um, mm -hmm. needs improvement and um, you know the, the biggest one for me was the fiscal systems just around the budget. I don't want to beat a dead horse. We all know. Um, and to kind of echo what um, Mr. Burke had mentioned about the transportation and the buses. I think there's been some improvement with the morning but um, in the afternoon um, I think we could still uh, use some work there. I don't know how to, you know, allocate resources or whatnot, but maybe investigate other opportunities or changes. Crystal? Went from needs improvement to proficient. The only one that was unsatisfactory for me was the budget. Standard number three. Yep, standard number three, family and community engagement. Um, I do have proficient in all areas, but I don't want to kind of leave behind the feedback we we did give in the formative, right? I think when we met in the formative, I think CPAC was kind of trending up, right? And I think it's kind of waning there as far as participation, and that's a huge... That's been something we've been trying to address for a while. I don't even necessarily know the, the examples there, but, but just continuing to try to, to give um, special education parents a voice, um, which we know you, you're the strongest advocate in the world, um, and we appreciate that. Um, so just continuing that, but I do have him proficient um, with family and community engagement. I mean, I think Mr. Strauss, when um, he's on his, when, when he's here, he's, he's visible, right? He's, he's at the events. Um, probably to his own detriment at times, um, which I think is admirable. Um, so he is proficient in all in all aspects there, in, in my opinion. I also have him proficient in all. Uh, I do have you exemplary in engagement just because I think that the access that you've given to our families and our community um, is about proficient for sure. I have proficient in all areas. I have proficient as well. I have proficient and um, I use the word developing again with a specific standard around community and stakeholder engagement. Um, but and when you look and dig into the indicators, which we'll get into at some point, I also have some exemplars yeah. Um, yeah. with the family and community engagement piece. I had a rating of uh, proficient. I had a rating of needs improvement just um, just from talking to staff and parents they just like to see you more in the schools which um, you know they've kind of big shoes to fill as far as Mr. Medeiros because I know Mr. Medeiros used to go to the schools all the time he was at all the events okay standard number four is professional culture and again, um, he was rated proficient in all areas for standard four professional culture. Um, but again, uh, we want to just recommend the continuous collaboration with all stakeholders. Um, I have him as proficient in standard four, but, but again, I think what we've seen as a school committee and obviously a leadership team as well, Mrs. Strauss, right, the more we can get people sitting down at the table and having conversations. 
um, whether it be budget, whether it be tackling um, buildings and grounds, whether, it, I mean, you name it, I think the more we can get people at the table communicating in person, I think the better off we're going to be. Um, but I do have him proficient in all areas or standard four. <clears throat> I have him proficient and I also have him exemplary um, based on leadership for administration in our schools. Um, it's been really nice to see a lot of our teachers and how excited they are to present and how excited they are to have their children present. Um, and, and with some of those teachers and principals, we haven't seen that in the past. So I feel as though their self-esteem has been there, it's it's done a lot for them. We've seen it, and it's been very nice to see. I am <coughs> I am exemplary as this for the same reason. The presentations that we've had from students in the different schools, uh, I've never seen that before, and I think it's uh, it's good for the community to see it as well as as well as us. Completely agree with that statement. Um, I had a rating of proficient in that gap for. I have proficient in all areas with notes about your commitment to high standards. I also had proficient in all indicators. Yeah, I had needs improvement and proficient in shared vision. All right. Thank you, everybody. And overall, do you want to comment to it? I have an overall proficient rating. <coughs> okay. I also have an overall proficient reading. I do too. Yep, as, as do I, overall proficient. Um, and just a thank you. Yes, thank for your you. hard work. Proficient. Thank you. <coughs> uh, yes, I had overall proficient. <coughs> <coughs> I did not have an overall profession, no. It was a mixed bag. Um, Ms. Hernandez, do we have anything from her? Um, I have not received. Um, so if you have anything, maybe you could share with Ms. Paul and I before we put some Yep, I can do that. I'll, yep. I'll send an email to Ms. Hernandez. I'll request her information. That's fair. Mm -hmm. um, just thought we yeah. thank you, Steve, Jen. Um, I think Bob, you're on that subcommittee as well. So thank you. We know we know you have a little bit of a task ahead of you of getting the summative taken care of. So um, thank you for that. Um, I'd like to add to that. I thank you to Alan you know, for being open to the process, for being, you know, <clears throat> requesting for your evaluation to be done, begging for this feedback you can incorporate it into this school to being patient throughout this process mm. the parts that have been <clears throat> smooth and the parts that have not yeah. any comments questions anybody all right I will ask the committee members to share their individual feedback with Steve and Jen And any is there a deadline? Can we put a deadline on that? Because okay. we need to, we're going to, I mean, the, writing up that report is not, it's, it's going to take time. Um, so Steve and Jen, when would you folks need the committee to send you our, our data? I'm going to say if you want a final reading by September 25th, that may be, Steve, that by the end of next week, at the latest. Sure. Or okay. even sooner. I mean, it, obviously, we did some work to, to get to this point. And sure. if we you did. want to share your notes, we're happy to. So, if put we that do, into uh, Steve, if we did September 13th, that gives us 10 days basically. To do you want more time than that? I don't think so. Okay. So, let's say by the 13th, we have all information, including Carolina's, please. Okay. Yep. Great. Any additional business? Anybody at the table? Just, just That's one funny. thing is, is Mr. Goodwin still here? Greg, how are you? Can we just get an update 
um, just regarding kind of the state of the schools and, and kind of as far as I know we spoke at the last meeting, just revolving around the schools being ready for, for kids to come back. I know today was the first day of school. Um, is there, uh, where are we at with, with the buildings? Is there any glaring needs that we need to address? Because if the school committee needs to come up with some alternate solutions to help Greg, we know, we know you guys are flat out. Um, but I think it's worth mentioning that if there's anything that the school committee can do to help in that area, we're, we're certainly more than happy to, to do so. Um, so I, I would just, is there an update? Are we in a good spot or what are your thoughts? So we visited schools, Greg, feel free. Where are you, Greg? Oh, there you go. Oh. All right. Um, we obviously visited the schools today. AES was in great shape. FES, um, I want to thank the town again. They, they, if you haven't been there, bushes were pulled out. Um, it looks fantastic. Um, they helped spread mulch. It looks fantastic. Um, classrooms are cleaned, um, campus schools are in good shape. Uh, you know, I, I, I said it before, um, in all my years in education, classroom administration, I've never seen a student say I can't learn because there's dirt in the corner of a classroom. Um, I have seen far too much uh, complaints about Greg and his team. Prior to school beginning, and they worked all weekend. They worked on Tuesday, and, and yes, they have a small staff. Right. Certainly, people have to remember that AES was not taken care of for a while because of the project going on. Right. So that needed to be the focus this summer. Now that the window projects had been completed, but. Um, I walked the halls this afternoon with Mr. Ward, uh, and the building looked great. Um, I don't know, Greg, what you'd like to add? <laughs> I knew there'd be something. <laughs> it's our guy. <laughs> Grab a mic. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, you know, like you say, you know, what could you do for us? I mean, the obvious is the obvious. We could always use more staff to get us where we need to be. And we have been kicked around a little bit with public comments uh, for our we were at with certain things but as far as health and safety and the overall standard of the building we were ready for opening yeah. uh, some people felt that you know we didn't give them the bells and whistles of cleaning uh, but that's not going to happen every year in every building we walked the buildings with the towns uh, we walked with the fire chiefs we walked with the building commissioners they're very satisfied they're very happy at the state of the buildings uh, safety wise they, uh, you know, they thought everything was in good order. Grounds-wise, I mean, we got our hands full dealing with athletics. There's no secrets with that. You know, there's a lot of moving pieces. The campus is busy. But if I, if I could just take a moment to recognize the staff, the maintenance and the custodial staff for all of their hard work. When you think about the summer, we've heard things like you had three months to clean a building. We had seven weeks. I know it's hard to put it in perspective, but that's really where we're at. You know, building cleaning didn't really start till after the 1st of July because we get prepared for summer programs. And then we're cutting short two weeks at the end of the summer for all the welcome back things. So there's a lot of moving pieces when you look at how the summer goes. But with the staff, they worked exceptionally hard to make this happen. They put in a lot of overtime. Student custodians worked very hard. Uh, so I'd just like to take a minute and say thank you to them. I'd like to recognize them. And thank you for asking, you know, how we are and where we're at. And we could always use a little bit more support. The other thing I think people need to remember is our custodians and maintenance people need to take their vacation time. Right. And so you're not taking it during the year. You're taking it in the summer. So you're losing people. So, so Greg is trying to balance. And I find it incredibly disrespectful that public comments are being made for people who aren't actually sitting in the buildings. Um, there is constructive comments, and then there's things that hurt him. And, and I watch him, and, and I tell him, don't go down the rabbit hole. Don't, don't go down there, and, and it, it's hard. It's hard. Um, but schools are in a good place. It was wonderful to see kids today, students who were incredibly happy students who were scared students who were 
um, wishing they had one more day, <laughs> but greeted by incredibly positive admin, uh, teachers. Um, and, and I will say it again and again, our teachers are outstanding. Um, I, I would love my kids to have been taught by our students, our, our teachers across the board. Um, and that ultimately is what matters. So transitions went really well at, at all the buildings, meaning transition for our fourth graders, transitions for our sixth graders, transitions for our ninth graders. Kindergartners are starting tomorrow. Um, kindergartners, as you know, um, had uh, at FES, they had their, um, their orientation. So I think it's actually harder for parents than it is for, for the kindergartners, um, but, but we're excited. Yeah, and just for the chair, Greg, I mean, I wasn't asking because of those <coughs> negative comments, right? And um, more asking from a solution perspective, right? And I don't want you folks suffering in, in silence, right? If you need help, it's on the school committee, the superintendent, district leader to figure out how can we get you some more bodies to do the work, right? I, I, out of all those negative comments, it was, I perused, I only dipped my toe in the rabbit hole, um, but there were a lot of, a lot of positive comments from people in the community that were willing to dedicate time, come and power wash a building or, or help out. So maybe think around how can we utilize those folks to come and volunteer. Um, but more importantly, we need to figure out how to fill all the, the open positions. And even if it's on a temporary basis and, and maybe us reaching out to some folks is going to be a cost there, obviously to the district, but you just have to let us know, right? We don't want you suffering in silence. We, I don't think there's a more pro custodian committee in the state um, we love you guys dearly um, and, and just want to thank you. So, I will say that LMM, -L is that the name of the paving company? LMM -L -L -M -M. Yes. -M -M did a phenomenal job paving and filling potholes. Um, they volunteered their time. Again, I have zero social media other than um, Instagram for, for the district and LinkedIn professionally. But I heard that there were comments from people in town saying that LMM made a mistake and we took from them. They came to us and offered when they were coming to the playground. We didn't reach out to them and they said, we would like to do this for you. Um, I would never solicit for that. So, uh, and they did a phenomenal job and, and so we're really pleased. Now, the only thing I would say truly in, in closing of this is that more conversations you know, some more tables, people sitting at them, you know, trying to get to where we need to be. When we started our master plan or our capital plan, which we had picked up, that was going to be our driving force to bring to light the things that we needed, where we needed to be. Uh, I'd like to see that continue. I'd just like to put it out there. I'd like to see it continue to get us where we need to be. But conversations definitely would need to be had, and I would love to have them uh, to get us where we have to be. Great. So thank you very much for the kind words. Thanks, Greg. Thank Greg, we appreciate it. I also let the, um, we had spoken at our last meeting, or it could be two meetings ago. Um, we have interviewed for two float nurses. We're, we're keeping one float nurse, so I don't want that to come across. But we are trying to figure out ways to have a district sub nurse as well. Um, but we definitely are, are offering a contract to a float nurse. So, okay. so that should help. Thank you for that. Thank you, Alan. Yep. Okay. And again, thank you for everybody for, for coming out tonight. Can I just ask a question? Yes, please. I know on social media a lot of people volunteered. Is that something that we have like a policy for? Like if somebody wanted to come and say power wash, they had a power washing company. Is that something that we could just entertain. So they to have to write out. it up just like LMM did. Right. So they have just to write, write it up. up. There are certain things they have to do. The other thing that I want to, where's Greg's back there. I'm oh, sorry, Greg. I love the idea of power washing, but we have some building issues that we have to be very, very careful, careful with in okay. terms of if we power wash too much, we're going to have things crumbling. <laughs> There's a bigger issue at hand with that. There's more to that. We'd love nothing more than to entertain that. But before doing the things we need to do to get us there, that's again, like Will says, it's right. We want to make sure things aren't crumbling and all right. of that. Right, right. right. And I'm just, not saying, please, I'm not saying the building's crumbling. That's not what I'm saying. The, the final piece, uh, did that answer your question? 
Yeah, I just wanted to know if there was yeah. a procedure. For um, I spoke with Detective Medeiros today at FES. Um, he will be on site three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, which is a real positive for us. So, nice. thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second it. So have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Oh, thank you. Any She's very excited to go on the bus tomorrow.